Welcome back, Whiskey Throttle Media fans. My name is Greg Hitchko, and this is part three of my 1999 KX250 split fire project. As you see here on the table, we've got engine cases, the crank, the transmission, the cylinder. We're gonna be tearing down the engine in this video. Now, if you have a 92 to 2004 KX250, this video is gonna be specifically for you guys. But if you guys have other two strokes in this era, these two-stroke engines are really similar to each other, so all you need is a manual, and I've actually got the step-by-step -step narrative process over on my channel. So if you got those two resources, you're handy with a wrench, you're gonna be able to tear down your engine as well. But without further ado, hop on the train and we'll get this KX250 engine torn down. First up is the Kickstarter here. Beware, it's got some red Loctite, so I needed to tap it off just a little bit. The water pump next. On most models, the water pump impeller is gonna be reverse threads, but not here on the KX250. For the rebuild, we're gonna be throwing on this Boyson water pump impeller. Notice how it's one piece, and the impeller on the Boyson model is so much larger than that of the stock. It pushes more coolant, keeps your bike cooler. If you have a different engine other than the KX250 here, the power valve system is just gonna be a little different, but we needed to get that governor cover off, and then the clutch cover, and then from there, we could go ahead and get the inner clutch cover off. Not really an issue getting that off at all. Now we've got the clutch. I like to take these bolts off in a crisscross pattern. That outer pressure plate comes out along with that push rod. And then you can just take all the plates out at once. Next up, you need the tusk clutch holding tool to crank loose that clutch holding nut there. That inner hub comes out without an issue and same with the outer hub here as well. And if you guys want, over on my video, I went through an extensive process of inspecting your clutch plates, fibers, etc. So if you haven't done that in a while, you wanna make sure you go check that out. The primary gear has a C-clip, so you just pop that off. You've got first the little water pump gear and then the primary gear. And then the kickstart assembly will come off next followed by the idler gear. And then you've got the shift shaft that'll pull right out with the rest of the shift mechanism here on the bottom of the shift drum. So that'll pretty much do it for the right side of the case. Next, we've got the left side. Rip off the ignition cover real quick in a crisscross pattern. And then since the other side of the Tusk clutch holding tool, the two pins here don't actually fit into the flywheel, what we need is a little Staley engine lockup tool. So we'll screw that into the top of the engine and then that'll stop the piston from moving up and down. Then you'll be able to blast that flywheel nut off. Then we've got the Tusk flywheel removal. That tool screws in reverse threads and then you just tighten down on the pin. That'll pop off easily. Next up with the stator, what you wanna do here is just make note of the timing before you go ahead and take the complete stator off. I like to use the JIS screwdriver so I don't strip the screw heads out. These things are really helpful when taking apart these Japanese bikes. And then that stator will just pop right out. Moving on to the cylinder, you can pop off those cylinder head nuts in a crisscross pattern. And then we've got the gasket. Now, this thing hasn't been opened up for 23 years. It's never been opened up and the condition of the head is mint. Same with the piston here, that's your typical carbon burn, so nothing really to worry about with the way it was running. And then you're just gonna remove the cylinder bolts in a crisscross pattern like I'm doing here. Next up, we'll remove the cylinder, so just take the piston down to bottom dead center. Normally, what you can do is just lift that cylinder right off, but since this side of the engine has two dowel pins in the bottom end of the motor. They were pretty much rusted down there, so I used some Maxima MPPL and let it soak overnight. Took a propane torch to it to heat up that area, and luckily I was able to break that cylinder free by using the dead blow. That was a small issue we had with the cylinder, but inside, it's really it was really in good condition. You could actually see a bunch of the OEM hash markings still on the inside of that cylinder but pretty standard wear. I think the bike had only about 20 hours on it so, but on the bottom of the intake side, we had a little bit more scoring up and down, and if you're looking at the piston, this is the intake side here. It must have sucked in just a little bit of dirt, so it was definitely time to get the piston and have the, uh, the cylinder replated. We're gonna be getting that done by uh, Millennium Technologies. They're gonna throw a fresh Nikoso plate on it. Next up to get the piston removed, just take that circ clip out. And then the piston pin, normally you can just push that out with your fingers. And then the wrist pin bearing, pretty simple. We'll get the reed valve removed. 
This thing was actually still in great condition as well. One thing to note, the gaskets on this bike were just trashed, but the reed valve was actually in great condition. Reeds aren't chipped, there's no gaps in there. If you look on the inside, you really wanna look for light through the reed valve, and those pedals are still really tight. Next up is the power valve system. Like I said, this is where if you don't have this specific Kawasaki two-stroke and this exhaust valve system, you're gonna to have to refer to your manual on how this came apart, but for not have been opened up in 23 years, you can see all the nasty carbon buildup on the inside of the power valve system. And what you wanna do before you throw your top end together, you really wanna get the carbon off of all the valves on and on the inside of the cylinder there. So I've actually got a video on how to do that over on my channel if you guys wanna head over there and check that out if you guys are doing something similar to your engines like that. Now it's time to get this bottom end split. You don't want any up and down play in that crank. In this one, we don't. For the rebuild, Millennium Technologies is gonna be rebuilding the crank with this Pro X rod and bearing. These come straight from Japan, so you know these are quality products. They're made in the same facilities as other OEMs, so that's awesome. For the splitting of the cases, you wanna set your engine up on blocks and set the ignition side up. When removing the bolts, do it in a crisscross pattern and do one turn at a time, and then you can go ahead and loosen up the rest of the bolt. Um, the Woodruff key can just be taken out with a pick. And this is the Tusk crankcase splitter tool. You wanna to separate the arms evenly along the cases and then screw in these screws on the top side of the case. And then you can drop the nuts down against the arms. And then what you wanna do is make sure the arms lift up evenly. And then with a the ratchet, you can go ahead and tighten down on that push rod there, which is gonna push on the crank. And with those bolts in the case, it's gonna help lift that case up. Now you wanna make sure your crankcase is lifting up as evenly as possible. If not, you either forgot to take a bolt out or your transmission is getting bound up. And then use your thumbs on the counter shaft and crank to lift that case half up. Next up, we'll take out the transmission. We've got the shift fork pins, and then you can move the shift forks out of the way of the shift drum. As you see here, take pictures, guys, when you're doing this. It'll help on the install. So that shift drum will then just be able to pop right out. You can remove the shift forks after that. And then with the engine lifted up on those blocks, you can just use two hands and push that transmission up and take it out as a group. Now, I've also went through an extensive inspection process of your transmission as well, checking out the thickness of the shift fork ears, the gap where the shift forks go, and then also you just wanna make sure there's no chunks or notches out of the transmission gears in themselves, because if you do, you're definitely gonna to wanna to get them replaced. So check out the entire process over on my channel. And with this build too, Millennium Technologies is gonna be taking this a step further with their isotropic micro polishing. Basically reduces friction, increases durability, and with that, you get reduced heat in your engine, so it's able to perform at its max capacity for longer duration periods. So next up, we're gonna remove the crank. Now you don't wanna hammer on this one crank end here where the primary gear goes because you could risk damaging those threads. What we're gonna do is just throw the Tusk crankcase splitter back on the case, screw in the bolts here, and then you can just again tighten down on that push rod and that's gonna help push that crank right out. Came out without a problem, but unfortunately, the crank bearing actually stayed on the case, which doesn't always happen. It was actually the first time it happened to me. I went on Amazon and purchased this bearing puller kit. Now, the rods here actually weren't long enough originally so what I had to do was use a c-clamp on the other side to pop that thing off next time I would actually buy the tusk kit because it actually fits but I'm pumped I was able to get that bearing off really without a problem before we go ahead and remove the bearings we've got these retainer clips with a little heat because those have red loctite in them hit that JS screwdriver with a hammer and those screws should really come out without a problem so some of the bearings in the case, uh, you need a blind bearing puller here that again, I've got from Tusk. I insert the collet into the bearing, screw the bearing puller into that collet, and then that's when I'll go and blast about a minute of heat on that bearing, and you just slide up on that slide hammer, and those bearings do come out fairly easily with a bunch of heat. The ones where you don't need the blind bearing puller, you can just use heat on the other side of the case. You find the same size socket as the inner bearing race, and then you can just blast it out with a dead blow hammer like you see here. But guys, that's gonna be the complete teardown of my 1999 KX250 engine. What is happening next? So I'm getting a ton of vapor blasting done by Tyler from Motor Resurgence. He's gonna be vapor blasting these cases, making sure they look brand new for me. Like I mentioned in the video, Millennium Technologies is getting a big box of parts 
They're getting the crank with the new Pro X rod and bearing. They're getting the transmission for isotropic micro polishing, and they're getting the cylinder as well for to do a fresh Nicosil replating. And then once I get the cylinder back from Millennium Technologies, it's going to be then sent off to Pro Circuit, and Mitch Payton himself is going to be doing a little work on the cylinder, touching up those ports, giving this KX250 a little extra ump. But now that the bike and engine are completely torn down, this is where the nitty gritty work really starts to happen. So if you guys want to catch more videos, you can head over to my channel, Greg Hitchko, catch more of the in-depth detail, or you can simply catch the highlights right here at Whiskey Throttle Media. As the bike is being torn down more, parts are being sent out and returned, the more excited I've become to have Pingree swing a leg over this bike at the end of the project. So I really appreciate you guys watching. As always, ride hard, be safe, and we'll see you in the next video. Peace.